But Dan is an assistant professor at Wilmington University and also has a financial services firm, also has a marketing consulting firm called Young Consulting Group, and also is an adjunct uh, at the University of Delaware uh, in the, a new center which is called the Horn Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Delaware. So he wears multiple hats and he is a specialist in uh, innovative marketing strategy. So he's going to share some ideas on how we can elevate our marketing strategies together as well. So welcome, Dan. No applause. Let's. Uh, let's, let's. <laughs> so when, when you get an East Coaster out here, um, which, and this place, and I have to be honest, I had no clue what was out here at University of Illinois, um, and I'm certainly going to go back home uh, and tell everyone about it. Um, full and fair disclosure: I am not a real estate guy. Uh, I have three properties, all of them awfully managed, uh, and part of the reason why I'm here is. Um, I, I told David, anything you need, let me know and so I can learn from you. So full and fair disclosure, I'm not a real estate guy. Um, when you have a PhD, usually you can lie to people about what you are. It's fabulous. <laughs> um, but here's, I'm just a hardcore marketer. I'm an ad man, okay? And basically why I'm here, the primary reason is because of my dissertation. So my dissertation was called an, ex an examination in impulse online giving to nonprofits by millennials. So that's a very long way of saying I get millennials to buy things without thinking. <laughs> okay? And, or, and donate, which is the most important thing. And so today I'm going to talk about something that no one else is really going to talk about, and that's about the people who are sitting in your classroom. And I want to start off with a really quick anecdote uh, that happened to me last year that gives a good idea about the people you're dealing with in your classroom, and therefore the people that you need to be marketing to. I was at home one night, it was about 11.30, and I get a call on my phone, and I have about 12 students who I mentor every year. And they basically self-select, they come up and they just ask me to mentor them. Um, and this particular student, uh, whose name's Jessica, I clearly won't tell you her last name, uh, she calls me at 11.30 at night, and clearly she'd been drinking. Okay, now I, I have a mentoring relationship, so she felt confident enough to call me, although I was watching House of Cards on Netflix, so I was really irritated that this was happening to me. <laughs> and so she calls me and she says, everyone calls me DY for Dr. Young, she says, DY, um, hey, my friend wanted me to call you because she's worried I'm gonna go home with this guy. This is what's really happening. <laughs> and I said, okay, um, why, why, can you call your dad? Or, or call, <laughs> can, you call, can you call someone else? Like, you know, Frank Underwood's about to go into the, you know, and, you know she didn't care. And she said, and once she got on the phone, I, I, said, I said, okay, well, why are you going to go home with this guy? And she said, you know, I feel comfortable with him. And I was like, you know, now I try to put my dad hat on because I have a nine-year-old daughter. And I said, well, you know, it's not safe and things of that nature. And she said, no, D.Y., I already, I already checked him out on Healthvana. He's okay. Now, any students out there, any, does anyone know what Healthvana is? It used to be called Hula. Okay, Healthvana, you do. Please, stand up. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We, we're, we're, all, we're all family here. It's okay. What, what's, what, now, what's Healthvana, Katie? Oh, no, that's Hulu. That's Hulu. So nice try, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Healthvana is a website where you can record your health records so people can check to see if you've had an STD. Oh, wow. So she said, D.Y., I feel very comfortable because I checked him out at Healthvana. He's cool. I said, uh, okay. <laughs> and as this is going on, I'm starting to feel older and older and older. Now I'm 39, but to, to kids in my class, I'm like 67. Okay, and so I said, well, okay, well, I'm just thinking that even though he's clean, it might not be a good idea because he just might be a bad guy. He said, no, D.Y., check that out too. I went on Lulu and checked him out. Does anyone here know what Lulu is? My man in the back, what's your name? It's a, uh, oh, Javar. Javar, what's Lulu? It's like an app where you can rate other people your age and your Correct. 
Correct. So how many people here have been on Yelp? Okay, so imagine that nice salmon dinner you're eating. Now that's a dude. <laughs> and, so, and so the girls go on the Lulu and they, get, and they rate guys at the university. So she said, the ratings, she said, D.Y., the ratings are tight. I was like, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, so I'm thinking, just me being me, you should need to extricate yourself from the situation because this guy could be crazy. It's like, well, D.Y., I haven't even met him yet. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I'm talking to him on Tinder. He's, he's, a, he's like 100 feet that way. But, I'm try, but I've already checked him out, and I'm thinking of walking over to talk to him. Now, at this point, I feel about 93 years old. Because where I'm from, you actually had to go to the bar with some game <laughs> to talk to a young woman. So what's the point of my story besides making me look old and me telling my student to get out of, she was literally singing in the bathroom. She's calling me from the bathroom. <laughs> to get out of the bathroom. My point of the whole story is to attract people who are millennials, you cannot use the same marketing methods that you used with everything else. Because the worst part about being a professor is every person sitting in that classroom thinks and in their mind knows that they are smarter than you are. It's true. They're coming to us to put them in a position to be successful, not to educate them. And that's the challenge. So when we do marketing for University of Illinois, we're saying, we're this, we're this, we're this the first thing the students do is they go online and they check you out. So if I say, we're, we're awesome, we're doing these great things, they go online, they go to Google, and all of a sudden they see, okay, ranked, Illinois ranked 48 out of 50 states in business development. I might go somewhere else. So how do we deal with that as marketers? One of the things I want to do is, I, I've, seen, I've seen people with wonderful slides, I thought Laura's slides were awesome, Dave, hopefully, hopefully we can get slides to, to all the slides of the presenters so we can all get together and think about these things. But I'm gonna break this down to you the way a marketing professor does, incredibly simply. So, so marketing is made up of eight parts. That's why we always say marketing is the most beautiful of all disciplines. No offense to all the real estate professors. Marketing is incredibly simple, but not easy. So segmentation is the first base of all marketing. We have this huge population of people and we divide it up. In entrepreneurial marketing, the basis of everything that we teach is that you're clearly going to have advertising for the entire school. But why not take 80% of your effort and put it to advertising the entire school, but 20% of your effort targeting specific people? The thought process is, and so we, we, watch, we watch, for example, um, an advertisement for the school. And I have to ask myself in just watching the advertisement, who is that ad trying to target? Are we trying to target everybody or are we trying to target the best of the best? In some cases, we might, and, and that has to be something that economic development asks itself when, we, when they go through their advertising. But we need to figure out ways to engage students where they are. Now, the most important decision people make is the place they choose to live. I didn't say that, David Wilk did. I just, I just took it off his website. And if we're really trying to target innovatives and the creative class, then our ads to those groups have to get better. Now, targeting is the second building block of all marketing. And one of the things we always have to, want, we always have to remember is a target market represents a group of people that are identifiable, they're sustainable. So in class, I always used to joke that um, I would never market to this group of men who have these beards now that are like six inches long. I mean, you know, the whole lumber sexual look, I mean, I'm sure people think it's good, but I don't think it's a sustainable market. I think it's gonna go away, so it's not a great market to go after. We have to have, some, we have, to have a group that's responsive, a group that's reachable, and for the university, we need a group that's profitable. So how are we making advertisements targeting those specific things that we're looking for? And every target market, we have to describe them demographically, geographically, psychographically, and behaviorally. How do we put in place advertisements for the school that makes the student, a specific type of student, feel at home here? I love drone photography, and it's beautiful. The challenge becomes it's replicable by all those other schools in the top 20. So how do you stand out? That's something that we have to ask ourselves as marketers. The next part is positioning strategy. And so every positioning state, 
statement, and sometimes people call it a mission statement, it's set up the same way. To a target market or need, our brand is a concept that does something. So something I jotted down last night, literally, um, one that got to my room, was you know, to creative students from Urbana-Champaign, our region's perfect place to create immediate change and spur innovation, entrepreneurship, and create jobs. Now, I'm not saying that's the right positioning statement. I literally wrote that up in 15 seconds. But when you look at the ads that you've seen so far today, do you know the positioning statement of the school? Do you know the mission of the school? Or does that get lost sometimes in some of the beautiful scenery and all the words that are going on? We all have to remember, Mark Zuckerberg didn't have a lot of thought to go out to California. He went on emotion. We make purchase decisions. We make decisions on emotion. And the people who are going to be coming to the school, a large percentage of them, it's going to be based on some sort of an emotional response to someone who is their age. So we need to do a better job of creating emotional responses. Because same way with me, once, you, once they get out here, they're going to love it here. But you have to get them out here. You can't get into a battle where they're looking at this place and then another and then another and then another. We have to reach out to very specific students. Differentiation is the fourth building block. What happens when we have a number of schools with the same positioning statement? I'm going to guarantee you most schools that deal with entrepreneurship and innovation, their positioning statements are very, very similar, as I'm sure you'd guess. But we have to almost think of ourselves as Mercedes and Audi. And here's what I mean by this. This is a very basic case study in marketing. Mercedes, top luxury car company five years ago. Usually followed by, at that point in time, by BMW, Lexus, Acura, and then Audi. BMW and Mercedes, as we all kind of know, battle head to head every single year. And then Audi made a very simple, but very calculated move to say in all of our advertisements, we're going to say that Mercedes is for rich old people, and we're for rich young people. And I think some of you might think back to some Audi commercials and think, yeah, I can see how they kind of did that. They so showed an old house that had cobwebs, and then they showed the red Audi going by the Mercedes. And then immediately, within six months, Audi picked up 10% market share because all the young, rich people bought Audis. Now Mercedes and BMW were not even in the decision set. So how is the University of Illinois doing that? We heard, we heard from Laura, who said that there's a 20% um, non-white population here. And she said that that's a good reflection of diversity. And what I would say is within that 20%, there's all kinds of different people that you could get more of here just by reaching out to people in the community and saying, will you do your own advertisements? Will you use Periscope? Does anyone here use Periscope through Twitter? Anybody? Would you mind, what's your name? Isaac. Isaac, would you mind telling everyone? Okay, what, would you mind telling, Isaac, okay, we won't make you show you your channel. Would you, mind, would you mind telling everyone what Periscope is? Okay, so you can, uh, you can post like a link on your Twitter feed so that you can have other people like watch your life. So I can just hold up my phone, have my camera going, and they can watch what I'm doing. Exactly, so some of our panelists don't know, but some of my Periscope followers were watching their life as they were talking up on the stage. And so, why is it so difficult to reach out to students, reach out to great students like Ryan and DFA and say, why don't you just walk around and show people what your life is like here? And if I'm like Ryan, and I think Ryan and I actually have a lot of similarities, played high school football, majored in marketing, I might think to myself, wow, I want to go there because Ryan goes there. The days of push marketing are over. When I was a little kid, I'd watch Lucky Charms commercials. I'd say, Mom and Dad, I want Lucky Charms, and I'd go get the Lucky Charms. Now, the students are saying, what are you going to do for me? And you have to show them people like Ryan and have them realize that they want to be like him, and then they'll come to school here. Price, I think, I think the professor talked about it really well. All this really means is we need to provide them with work, benefits, opportunities. For a lot of students, internships mean much more than any dollar that you can give them. Provide them with something of value and also provide them the opportunity to hang out with people like Ryan who are like them and it'll work out well. Promotion, once again, I would, I would venture to say any, tell any commercial that gets put together by the university for $5,000, I would rather get 10 opinion leaders 
bring them on campus, have them stay on campus, and say your, your only job is to stay here on campus, walk around the campus, periscope it out, tweet it out, and from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock at night, I just want you to blog about what you saw. Opinion leaders with thousands of followers, I will guarantee you it's much more effective and a bigger ROI on the money you spent on that commercial. I'll guarantee, I'll put my own money up on it. Because that's how younger people are learning. And in place, once again, I th one of the things that I did not know was about Yahoo here, was about some of the other things here. You're doing, a really great, uh, you're doing a really great thing by giving students the opportunity to work inside of the businesses that you're in. Continue to do that at, a, at an even greater level. But once again, empower them to broadcast their own content to other people. The Economic Development Office should be telling students this over and over and over and over again. They have to broadcast their own content or else it won't resonate with anybody. And at the end of the day, it's about the product. So the product is the student. So once again, eight simple parts of marketing. I always tell my students, because usually I'm one of the last classes they see, congratulations, uh, you just spent about $2,000 in textbooks and I just showed you everything about marketing in, in eight slides. <laughs> so I'm always the last class. So they're, they're really irritated by that. But the product that you get, and the reason why product is last, is because the product you will get is a student or a prospective student that's really psyched about coming here. Because they've met people like Ryan and DFA. Because they've seen the campus. Because they've seen the internships. Because they've read the blogs. Because they've seen the Periscope. They feel as though they're already here. The challenge in marketing now is to ingratiate yourself into the habits of people who are already moving around. How are, you, how are you putting the University of Illinois into the habits of a young person? Maybe it's through an online forum. Maybe it's through a Facebook room. Maybe it's through a LinkedIn. But you, it has to be part of an organized marketing strategy. Now, marketing, I also think, is great because the only answers to every question are depends and maybe. Will this work? Eh, depends. Maybe. <laughs> but at least you're basing it on information from the prospective people. If there's anyone here who works at the university, the first thing that I would do after this is over is to go see these students. And students, I will, I'm going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. Be honest with your professors. <laughs> you can say, yeah, I did not like that advertisement. You can say, yeah, I did not get immediately juiced about that. Because you, have to, you, you operate in a symbiotic relationship where you have to help each other out. So once again, this was a very, very quick and dirty marketing lesson for today. Um, once again, I'll be around afterwards for any other questions, although that was pretty simple. And uh, I'd like you to thank, to thank you know, David um, for inviting me up here from, from Delaware to see this beautiful campus. And I, I will certainly be uh, tweeting about it later. So take care.